Kathy and Elliot Lewis on stage. <laughs> Kathy Lewis, Elliot Lewis, two of the most distinguished names in radio, appearing each week in their own theater, starring in a repertory of transcribed stories of their own and your choosing. Radio's foremost players in radio's foremost plays. Ladies and gentlemen, Elliot Lewis. Good evening. May I present my wife, Kathy. Good evening. Tonight, a nostalgic play. Come back with us to the days before World War I, the days before we girls used to bob our hair, the days of the Model T Ford. When we fellas wore starched collars, and all it cost for two ice cream sodas was ten cents. Come back with us to Greenwich Village in New York City and meet all the young hopefuls, the artists and writers and musicians who lived there. Our scene, a converted boarding house deep in the village. Our people, two boys and two girls. The boys live upstairs, the girls downstairs. Our story, Take My Hand, My Love, by Samuel B. Harrison. Oh, Fred. Oh, hi, Walt. Where you been? I got a haircut. It's growing down over my collar. You got home early. Yeah. Hang if I know how you can work on this old rattle trap. I manage. Any mail for me? No, just that. For me. From Harper's. Mm. Rejection? Yep. But I don't get merely rejection slips. I get the nicest letters with my returned manuscripts. Read that. Hey, uh, Fred. Hmm? I'll have to owe you my share of the rent till I get paid for the last batch of pot boilers. No, that's all right, but... Uh... Golly. Well, I'll have the check in a few days. Hmm. Walt, you know you can't earn a living writing blurbs or greeting cards. Yeah, I know, but it keeps me alive until I... Till what? Till you get a book of poems published? How many of the greatest poets of all time died pauper? I never thought to be rich. All right. But you can't have a decent suit of clothes, a couple of dollars in your pocket, be able a Saturday night to take a girl to Luchow's for dinner, maybe a Broadway show. You. When's the last time you had better than a 30-cent dinner at Ma Bertolotti's? What's wrong with being a newspaper man? You don't hear a word I'm saying, do you? No, sure, but I don't see anything wrong taking a girl to Mar Bertolotti's, even if it isn't very soigné and dinner costs only 30 cents. Moreover... Oh, what's the use? How does this look, Aunt Norma? Oh, it's a fetching hat, Bess, but isn't it a little old for you? I really think it is. Well, I have to make an impression, don't I? <laughs> did you impress anyone? I certainly did, and you'll never guess who. Whom, darling? David Velasco. No! Yes. We talked for a half hour. Oh, he's the grandest, kindliest man. He asked my age. I told him 19 going on 20. I don't think he believed me. Did he ask you to sing for him? No, he doesn't do musicals. Well, then why? But I wouldn't mind doing a dramatic role like Maud Adams and Peter Pan... Where'd you get that old-fashioned tin bathtub? Borrowed it from the janitress. Whatever for? I'm going to paint you in it. <laughs> you mean like September Moore? Yes. <laughs> but I'm going to call it Saturday night. <laughs> Why? Because farms and small towns, a Saturday night bath and a tin tub on the kitchen floor and in the stove is a ritual, isn't it? Mm-hmm, but <laughs> gracious. Will people see me like that in a museum or art gallery? I hope... If the folks back home ever see it. I'll disguise you, honey. I'll give you a snub nose and auburn hair. When do we start? Soon as I finish this, I'm working on. There. There's as good a bow as I can tie. Ah, thanks. Fred. What? Have you got a speaking acquaintance with the girl... Artist, I think, lives below us. Aha, uh -huh, that uh, cute little trick staying with her catch your eye? That 17-year-old infant? Certainly not. Aha. Uh -huh. No, 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 seriously. No, I mean Norma Saunders, according to the name of the letterbox. Don't you know each other? Uh, no. I uh, said something once, uh, you know, just joshing, and uh, you really interested? I'd like to know her. 
Why, she's a prude. Vinegar in her veins. Because she isn't easy to know? Ah, she's an old maid. She's under 30. She has dignity, a lovely, sensitive face. Skinny as a rail. Looks consumptive. No. She she has an, an ethereal quality. Well, love comes to Walt Kittredge. Invite her out to dine. Continental atmosphere of Ma Bertolotti's. Or uh, write her a sonnet. Don't be an ass. Whew. Hot here. Uh-huh. You miss the breezes of Vermont? Oh, no. I love Greenwich Village. Everything about it. That basement place you took me to. Guido's Den. Mmm. Just candlelight. Of course, it's a little smelly, but... So romantic. Artists and writers sitting around, even on the floor, talking, arguing. I think it's wonderful. Yes, it is wonderful. There's also heartbreak here. I want to paint. You hear that? She wants to play. That man upstairs pecking away at his typewriter. <laughs> the thousands who come, few succeed. Most ultimately give up the struggle and vanish into limbo. New hopefuls come to take their place. If I don't get anything, can I come stay with you again next summer and try? If your mother lets you. I'll be 18 then and she... Aunt Norma, don't push away your plate. Oh, I've had all I want. My goodness. I don't know how you keep up your strength. Now, you finish that. I have no appetite. I can't. You must force yourself to eat. Go on. Shh, shh, shh. Uh, the room's cooled off. Close the door. That's Snooper. Ah, oh, princess, your hair twirls and curls like the tendrils of a grapevine. Your lips are rose petals kissed by the morning dew. Your form is a slim word of beauty risen from a woodland pool. There's your line. Huh? Oh. Um, you, Sir Knight, look at the mud you've tromped over my kitchen floor. Is that the place for your gauntlets? Chop some wood, else you'll gnaw yesterday's ham bone for dinner. Go on! Ah! Oh, look what I did. Well, that means good luck. A surprise. <laughs> Aunt Norma. Yes. Aren't you ever going to marry? Worried I'm being left on the shelf? Oh, no. What I mean is, well, as long as I've been here, you haven't had a single man caller or gone out with one, and you don't seem to... Oh, that. What, in heaven's name? That, hanging in the window. Oh. Paper bag, something in it. Well. It's not come down on a string from upstairs. I'll find out. Hello up there. Let's finish the dishes. With that hanging there? Ignore it. Maybe it's something like a drowned kitten. Nonsense. Kids, I remember once Davy Brent... There are no children upstairs. But then let's take it in and see what it is. Encourage the idiotic... Oh, certainly not. Close the window. No. I'm not going to stifle here just because of that... That... Give me those scissors. Now we'll see. It's a bottle. Maybe there's a note in it. Distress. Like island castaways. Silly. Well, Italian port wine. There's a note on it. You snatcher. You got it. Read it. Dear Miss Saunders, mm -hmm. please accept this. A glass of port before a meal stimulates the appetite. Humbly, Walt Kittredge. The eavesdropper heard when we were having dinner. He couldn't help it. The door was open. Uh, which one of the two upstairs is this? The taller one. I know the other one's name, Slade. He's nice. He smiled at me. Of course, but... of course. A very clever trick, undoubtedly, to be introduced to you. Oh, no. Oh, Yes. Just tie that bottle back on the string and wait. Wait a minute. I'll write a note to go with it. Put him in his place. No. No, Aunt Norma. You don't hold yourself in very high esteem if you jump to the conclusion that the man is interested in me. Oh, it couldn't possibly be you. You put yourself on the shelf and I know you're only 29. 
going on 28. He signs himself humbly, does a sweet thing like this, and you... you want to put him in his place. Now, if you're the person I think you are, you'll keep that wine, write a nice note of thanks, and tie it on that string. Yes. <laughs> Ah, oh, sit down, Joe. I'll be uh, shaved in a jiffy. Where did your boarder walk over the weekend? Uh, White Plains. A hey, uh, cousin lives there. You know, he's got a fine talent. Yeah, but uh, head in the clouds. Impractical. Now, last week, he sent in 30 pieces of dog or old rhymes for greeting cards. They took nine. Dollar and a half a piece. Hey. Hey, Fred. What? This by the typewriter titled... Take my hand, my love. Read it. A sonnet. A love ballad. Mm. Hey, that's lyric. It's much too impassioned to be written without some particular female in mind. Is there someone? Oh, yes, yes. By Jingo, she lives right below us. Come here. I'll show you something. There. Windowsill. See that nail? He ties a string on there and sends down notes... Hauls up the answers. Can you beat that? A grown man. Oh, but why if she lives downstairs? Oh, the lady is unapproachable. Look, obviously he wrote that take my hand, my love, for her. But he'll never have the gumption to send it down. Let's do it for him. But if he finds it missing... Type a copy. He'll never know till the walls of Jericho come tumbling down. Ah, there. Enough of this for now. Finished already? Oh, no. I thought you had to deliver those drawings by Monday morning. They will be. And now I'm going to set you in that tub and paint. <laughs> Tonight? Oh, it's Saturday night, isn't it? Night of the bath. If this canvas isn't a masterpiece, it'll at least be authentic. <laughs> there. A little to the left. Now a kettle on the stove. I'll do that. You start getting undressed. When you stop giggling, I'll believe you're really 17 going on 20. Yeah, I must get a kerosene lamp. It gives a wonderful yellowish glow. Uh, actually, water in the tub? Oh, it's not necessary this first sitting. Oh, pull down the shade. Mm. Aunt Norma, there's a note. I see it. What are you doing? You see what I'm doing. There. There's your Mr. Kittredge. I don't know what he said in that note, but I think you're wrong. Please, Bess, stop playing Cupid. I don't want to hear anything more about him. I'm sorry. You are listening to Kathy and Elliot Lewis on stage. Tonight's play, Take My Hand, My Love. If you knew of some neighbors in financial trouble or perhaps in emotional straits, you'd tell them if you knew which social agencies in your community could see them through their difficulties. Of course you would. In the same spirit, aware Americans contribute annually to community chests and the United Fund to see to it those agencies continue to be there when needed. Give the United Way to make your community all it needs to be for those in need. A uh, walk. I say walk. Hmm? Yeah. Seen the lady downstairs since you're back? You know, once or twice. Why? Oh, just curious. Any uh, change in her attitude? Yeah. Strange. I used to get a smile and a word of greeting. Cold shoulder? Mm. Gives me a feeling I'm not there. Well, if you want my advice... I don't. Oh, uh, Miss Saunders? Uh, I'd like to talk to you. Yes? 
I hoped we were going to be friends. Uh, is there any reason why you're again looking the other way and passing me by as if I were a, a pariah? Why? Won't you tell me why? I don't feel obliged to make explanations. Well, of course, but well, let's be adult. Yes, let's be adult and stop the childish game. Notes on strings. All right, but you still haven't told me because why... Because your impudence. I? Impudent? Well, how... This past Saturday night... Go on, please. I don't want to discuss it. I made a mistake when I accepted that bottle of wine. I was out of town Saturday night. I must really ask you not... I mean, d did you say you were out of town last Saturday? That's right. I spent the weekend in White Plains. Oh. Oh. Will you forgive me? Sure. Sure. Uh, for complete amnesty, will you come and have coffee with me? I'd be delighted. Good, let's go. Say, uh, won't you tell me what it was Saturday you thought let's I'd... Let's talk about something else. Okay. Is that, um, uh, that chap you live with a, a very close friend? Well, not really close. He has his interests, and, uh, and I have mine. Mm -hmm. You write. Well, I try, mostly poetry. Published? Oh, occasional short pieces in Scribner's, Argosy, The Post. So little I've got to write blurbs for greeting cards. Perhaps I should have stayed put teaching school. Where? Uh, Dexter, Ohio. Where are you from? Bennington, Vermont. Long here in the village? Seven years. You? Eight. Oh, here we are. Is this all right? Yes, thank you. Well, sit down, won't you? Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, just coffee, please. Uh, are, are you an illustrator? I like to think of myself as a painter. My cupboard would be bare if I didn't have this commercial work to do. Is is that it? Yes. May I see? Yeah. Animals. I I try to do amusingly for a toy manufacturer. Here. Mm -hmm. These are amusing. Fine. Truly fine. Must be fun doing them. Yes. And it pays fairly well. Say, look. How would you like to do a children's book with me? thing publishers like best, I'm told, is to get the illustrations with the story complete. Oh? I like to do whimsical little fables. Got any written? Well, yes. Oh, thank you. But, yes, but I've got a quirky new idea about a little chick who didn't want to be born. Afraid to face life, lying snug and safe in his shell. Uh -huh. He envisions danger of the fox and the hawk. A bleak winter, a fight for possession of a worm he finds. Do you see it? Yes, yes. Of course, he finally emerges and finds there's beauty in the world. Do you want to read it? Yes, very much. When? I'll do it tomorrow. I'll... And I'll put it in your letterbox. No, bring it in... Or... Send it down the usual way. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to it blow. Yeah. Hey, shut the window, will you, Walt? Yeah, all right. It's a shame to let these tickets go to waste. Oh, give them to Walt. He goes for highbrow music. He can take her downstairs. Mm. Any repercussions on another thing? Well, um, uh, say, Walt. Yeah? Uh, our music critic gave me a pair of tickets for the opera. Uh, for tomorrow night. Traviata. Bores me stiff. You want the tickets? Uh, well, I've got a business dinner date tomorrow night, but... Well, yeah, maybe I can make it. Good, good. Well, here you are. Well, thanks. Well, thanks, Fred. Well, so long, fellas. So, so long. long. Hey, look, Joe, I think that love ballad we sent down backfired. But she wouldn't refuse the opera. The only trouble is he'd be afraid to ask her. Let's do it for her. Well, what if she accepts? Oh, I'll tell him and he'll kiss me for it. If she refuses, nothing lost. Yeah, but he said... I know what he said. Sit down there and type as I dictate. <laughs> darling, you finished reading The Little Chick Who Didn't Want to Be Born? Oh, it's cute. The cutest story. Are you going to do it? I've already started. Really? Yes. There's a sketch of page one. Here. Oh. You like the worried look on Mother Hen's face? Yes. Both your names will be on the book. If it's bought and published. And something else. 
I'm uh, going to the opera tomorrow night with Mr. Kittredge. Yippee! When did he ask you? <laughs> While you were reading in the bedroom. There's an invitation swinging out there. I simply wrote yes with my initials and tied it back on. He hasn't pulled it up yet. He will. Of course, I'll have to get some things. Gloves, a, a dress. Oh, midnight blue taffeta. I saw just the thing. Organdy collar and pouch. <laughs> Fred, how much longer? Oh, darn shoelace broke. I mean the note. It's 6.30. Well, take another look. See if she took it in yet. No. That's still there. Same sheet of yellow paper. Well, haul it up and skip the whole thing. Hey. Huh? Hey, Fred. Why? What now? The wind blew the note. String caught in the next house fire escape. Oh, boy. I gave it a yank. The note tore off. It. Huh? There it goes. Over the roof. It's gone. Oh, uh, well, that's that. Perfume. I don't know why he isn't coming to take you. Because, darling, he has a business dinner appointment uptown. It's blowing to rain. Well, it's been blowing to rain for two days now. There. How do I look? Lovely. Just lovely. Turn around. Perfectly divine. Taking your umbrella? It's green. The dress is blue. And I... I'm off. Enjoy yourself. <laughs> I simply wanted to... Yeah, what are you doing here? I came in out of the rain. Why aren't you at the Manhattan Opera House where you asked Aunt Norma to meet you? I? You. I didn't ask. You sent down a note on a string yesterday asking her to go to the opera with you tonight. Now, she's standing there like a fool. I'll go there now. Well, it's the least you can do. You... 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 Here, here. Get out of those wet clothes. There. One question. Why didn't you take a cab home? I couldn't get a cab. Night like this. Oh, poor dear. You're chilled. Off with that. There. A steaming hot bath and get into bed and hot tea and I... Oh, no, don't. Don't cry. He isn't worth it. I don't care about the dress or anything. It's just the humiliation. I know. Where are you going? Just to the corner drugstore to get some quinine. I'll be right back. Oh, hi. She wasn't there. Because she's back upstairs in bed. She's never been very strong. And if she gets pneumonia, you're Wait a be... minute. Let go. Let go of my arm. You listen to me. I didn't send any note. Do you hear? You tell her that. I didn't send it. If you didn't, who did? Hmm. Ah! <laughs> you look like a drowned rat. Do I? Yeah. Say, I thought you went to the opera. Did you send down a note in my name asking her to meet me there? You did, didn't you? Well, yes. But... Why? 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 I wanted to help you. You meddling, blithering idiot. Uh, hey, hey, cool off. She never got the note. The wind blew it off. I ought to bash your nose in. Oh, well, just try it. I'm fed up carrying you anyway. This is my place and you can get out. I will now. Hallelujah. I'll be back tomorrow to give you the $12 I owe you and pick up my things. back permission, I'm in the show. Rehearsals start next Monday, five weeks, and then we open in Philadelphia. Oh, that's wonderful, honey. You think you can take care of yourself? Of course. Aunt Norma, you're not going to start working the second day out of bed. Oh, this is no exertion. You're not going on with that book after what he did? Yes. Mr. Kittredge didn't do it. Then who did? The fellow he lived with up there. Stupid, practical joker. I know. Don't ask me how I know. I just know. No, Mr. Marlowe, you're the first publisher to see it. Fine. A happy union of talents, your illustrations and Mr. Kittredge's story. Why didn't he come with you? Uh, he moved. You called? 
No, we we didn't quarrel. I I mean, it was just a, a misunderstanding. But I'll find him and we'll make it up. Good. When you do, here's the contract. Gives us the option on the next book you do together. Three copies. You both sign. Bring them in and we'll give you the checks. Advance on royalties. Goodness, I thought I'd have to go without saying goodbye. Oh, it's a great day, darling. I found out where to reach Mr. Kittredge. Really? Ma Bertolotti, woman who runs that restaurant on McDougal Street, told me. He's working for the New York Herald. Phone him. No, no, I'll go with you now to the Grand Central Station. I'll send him a telegram from there. Aunt Norma, you're in love with him. There. You keep one, one for me, and one for the publisher. Not so fast, please. First, some of Ma Bertolotti's good port wine to sharpen the appetite and celebrate the occasion. There. Will you toast it? To the little chick who didn't want to be born. We're afraid to face life. But learned it could be joyous. And many more books we'll do together. Since we're collaborators... May I call you Norma? Please do. Walt? You were laid up ten days. August 14th was your first day out. How did you know? I'm a newspaper man. I... I hope you won't think I'm taking advantage of a situation, but... Well, some time ago this summer, as I sat at my typewriter, dreaming as a poor Scrivener does, I wrote a little sonnet to you. That's very nice. What did you call it? Take my hand, my love. Will you, Norma? Yes, Walt. <laughs> <laughs> 